At 6 p.m. yesterday evening, you were executed and pronounced dead. You no longer exist. What kind of prison is this? It's not a prison. You're about to enter the Animus. What you're about to see, hear, and feel are the memories of your ancestor, who has been dead for 500 years. What do you want from me? Your past. Welcome to the Spanish Inquisition. Time for the best video game adaptation ever met. Oh, we're doing Assassin's Creed? Ugh. The movie begins with a historical explanation of the Knights Templar, a group that is notorious for their malicious intentions. They have been on a relentless quest for the Apple of Eden, a mysterious artifact said to grant its possessor the power to control the free-thinking ability of humans. For centuries, they have sought to obtain this powerful relic. However, the only ones standing in their way are the Brotherhood of Assassins, the secret and ancient organization dedicated to stopping the Templars and safeguarding humanity from Apple's potentially devastating influence. The narrative then shifts to 1492 AD in Spain, where we are introduced to Aguilar, a skilled member of the Assassin tribe. He is initiated into the Brotherhood and takes on the solemn duty of combating the Templar, vowing to prevent them from acquiring the apple at any cost. As part of his initiation, Aguilar undergoes the traditional ceremony of having his ring finger severed and is bestowed with special gauntlets by his fellow assassin, Maria. During this process, he recites the creed that governs the actions of the Assassins. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. The scene then fast forwards to the 20th century, where we meet Callum Lynch, a troubled young boy. He tries to ride his bicycle across rooftops, but sadly, this is a dumbass idea, and he cannot make it to the other end, and falls. After this, he goes home, only to encounter a tragic event involving his assassin father and Templar mother. He spots his mother sitting lifeless on a chair, and his father holding a knife, making it evident that he killed her. Just then, a group of Templars approach the house, and so, Callum's father advises him to run away. Left with no choice, the scared boy escapes through the rooftops, leaving his old life, and thankfully, his bicycle, behind. In the present day, an adult Callum finds himself imprisoned and condemned to death for a crime he allegedly committed. It's his birthday, and he is supposed to be given the death penalty on the same day. The prison guards take him to a torture room, where they tie him to a bed and inject a mercury fluid inside of him. In the last few minutes, Callum remembers all the beautiful moments he spent with his mother, and also curses his father for troubling them. Surprisingly, Callum then opens his eyes inside a mysterious facility where he meets Dr. Sophia Riken. She tells him that he is already dead to the rest of the world. Dr. Sophia then reveals that he has a unique heritage and that he must help her in her research. Callum, who is still confused as to what is going on, gets up and tries to escape. However, when he crawls to the edge of the facility, he discovers that he is somewhere in the outer world and it's impossible to run away. Dr. Sophia tells him that he is inside the Abstergo Foundation building a company seeking to achieve global peace. Just then, a guard tranquilizes Callum, rendering him unconscious. He is then taken to an experiment room where Sophia introduces him to the Animus, a remarkable machine that analyzes human DNA and allows them to relive the memories of their ancestors. Despite his refusal, Callum is connected to the machine, and he gets the vision of Aguilar, who lived over five centuries ago. As Callum delves deeper into the mesmerizing experience of being in Aguilar's shoes, he finds himself standing standing on a cliff alongside other skilled assassins, all focused on a crucial mission to rescue Prince Ahmed, the son of Sultan Muhammad. The young prince has been captured by the Templars and is hidden in a barn. Amidst the tension, one brave villager steps forward, revealing that he had been hiding the prince. However, this turns out to be a big mistake, as Ojeda, a ruthless Templar commander, orders the execution of the villager's entire family. The Templars then declare that the entire town will face repercussions for their alleged involvement with the assassin 
assassins. Meanwhile, Aguilar and his fellow assassins, who are cloaked in shadows, stealthily move towards the Templars to save Prince Ahmed. In a swift and precise attack, Aguilar pounces on the Templar commander, while the other assassins skillfully neutralize the guards protecting the prince. However, Ojeda proves to be a strong adversary, and he fights back. After killing an assassin, he goes after Maria, who is trying to escort the prince to safety. Following this, a lengthy chase ensues, with Aguilar desperately trying to catch up with Ojeda. On horseback, he makes daring leaps and maneuvers, displaying his extraordinary abilities. He eventually manages to jump onto the same carriage as Ojeda, engaging in a fierce battle to secure the prince's safety. In the present day, Sophia suddenly disrupts Callum's connection to the Animus, pulling him back to reality. Because of this, Callum experiences the bleeding effect, where the memories of his ancestor briefly overlap with his present self, causing disorientation and headaches. He even starts seeing Aguilar's visions without being connected to the Animus. In the next scene, Sophia and her father, Rickon, talk about their progress in locating the Apple of Eden. They are actually Templars, who believe that Callum, being a descendant of Aguilar, holds the key to its hiding place. Sophia's desire to secure her place in Templar history drives her determination, while Rickon is eager to obtain the Apple to further the Templars' goals of controlling humanity. Meanwhile, as Callum wakes up from the Animus, he is still having lingering visions of Aguilar and his past life. Sophia explains the Animus's purpose and urges Callum to cooperate fully to unlock more valuable information and memories from his genetic lineage. She calms Callum down and then takes him to the other room, informing him that they have been monitoring him since his birth. Sophia also shares the tragic backstory of Aguilar, revealing that his parents were murdered by Ojeda, driving him to seek revenge and eventually join the assassins. Hearing all this, the significance of the apple and its connection to Aguilar's past life begins to unravel, and Callum realizes the immense responsibility that he bears. The scene then shifts to the facility's dining hall, where Callum becomes the subject of curiosity and observation by other patients, who are also part of the Templar experiments. Right then, Moza, a descendant of a Haitian assassin, reaches out to Callum, cautioning him to make the right choices and align himself with the true cause. He secretly suggests Callum not cooperate with Templars. On the other hand, tensions rise as Rickon confronts Sophia about Callum's progress. He demands immediate results and threatens to replace her if she doesn't comply. Sophia, however, remains steadfast in her determination to unlock the secrets hidden within Callum's genetic memory. When Callum is alone in his room once more, he sees the haunting image of Aguilar. The visions trigger something within Callum, and he suddenly finds himself shadow fighting with his ancestor. To his amazement, Callum discovers that he possesses the agility and combat skills of Aguilar. When the attendants rush in to restrain him and take him to Animus, he unleashes his newfound prowess and tries his best to fight them off. However, he fails to do so and is dragged into the Animus. After being connected to the mysterious machine, he relives more of Aguilar's memories. This time, Callum finds himself trapped in a dungeon alongside Maria and their leader, Benedicto. They are awaiting a gruesome execution, orchestrated by Ojeda. The tension escalates as Ojeda sets Benedicto on fire right before their eyes. But Aguilar is not going to die so soon. In a daring display of skill, he frees himself and Maria from their restraints and unleashes chaos upon their captors. Together, they manage to escape the Templars, setting off a spectacular explosion in the process. The Templars chase them, with Ojeda and his forces putting in their full effort. Along with the rooftop chases and fierce battles, Callum experiences the thrill of Aguilar's adrenaline-pumping escapades. Despite Ojeda's determination, Aguilar's resourcefulness and agility allow him to outmaneuver the Templars time and again. However, back in the facility, the intensity of the memories take their toll on Callum, and he experiences a seizure, desyncing him from the Animus. Concerned for his well-being, Sophia calms him down and tends to him. After a while, when Callum regains his consciousness, Sophia reminds him of their vital mission for world peace and hands him his mother's necklace, an important reminder of his past. In the next scene, Rickon approaches Callum personally, offering him a proposition. In exchange for Callum's help in finding the Apple of Eden for the Templars, they promise him something in return. Next, Rickon brings Callum to a room filled with seemingly lifeless people. He shows Callum his father's blade, which he used to kill his mother, and reveals that he is also being held captive in the same facility. When Rickon leaves the room, Callum picks up the blade and is shocked to see a vision of his father 
standing before him. Back in his office, Rickon is confronted by Sophia, who scolds him for pushing Callum too hard. However, Rickon believes that tapping into Callum's hatred for his father will make him willingly enter the Animus. Finally, Callum confronts his father, Joseph, after years of anger and bitterness. The latter explains that his mother chose death over being used by the Animus, and that she sacrificed herself to protect him in the Creed. Joseph then warns Callum about falling into the Templar's trap, as the apple could bring destruction. However, despite his anger, Callum promises to find the apple and put an end to the Creed for what his father has done. He then hands over his mother's necklace as a gesture of his determination, and proceeds to get connected to the Animus. As Callum is taken back to his room, he is attacked by one of the assassin descendants, but somehow he manages to defend himself until the guards intervene. Following this, Callum willingly returns to the Animus, diving himself back into Aguilar's memories. This time, Aguilar and Maria locate the apple in the possession of the Sultan, who plans to exchange it for his son's release. As the Templar Grand Master Thomas opens the box containing the apple, Aguilar and Maria launch an attack on the soldiers, creating chaos. Aguilar manages to hold Thomas at knife point, but on the other hand, Ojeda does the same to Maria. This causes a tense standoff between the two parties, but in the end, Maria sacrifices herself to protect the Creed. Enraged at the loss of his dear friend, Aguilar unleashes a brutal attack on Ojeda and eventually kills him using Maria's hidden blade. He then escapes the scene with the Apple of Eden. Aguilar fights his way out of the tunnel, but finds himself surrounded by soldiers. However, determined to keep the Apple safe, he leaps over a bridge and into the water, swimming away to save Safety. Back to the present, we see the Animus slowly falling apart, but surprisingly, Callum is unharmed and still connected to Aguilar. The scientists around him eagerly observe Aguilar, meeting with Christopher Columbus and handing over the apple, making him swear to keep it safe and a secret until his death. After this revelation, Sophie quickly orders her men to dig Columbus's grave and find the Apple of Eden. As the other assassins sense the change in the facility, they engage in fierce battles with the guards to reach Callum and kill him. Meanwhile, Callum finds finds himself in a mental landscape surrounded by Aguilar and other Creed assassins. He sees the face of his mother, dressed as an assassin, leading him to find the apple. In a desperate move, Rickon orders his men to purge the facility and prepares to escape. The other assassins successfully take control of the facility, eliminating the guards and making their way to the Animus. Joseph also fights bravely, but is eventually killed. Later, when the assassins reach the Animus, they are shocked to see Callum talking to his dead mother. She emphasizes the importance of the Creed, and tells him to stop the evil. With this, Callum finally embraces his role as an assassin, and leads the others in a counterattack against the Templar soldiers, flooding the room. He rushes to the rooftop, hoping to stop Rickon's escape. Unfortunately, it is too late, as Rickon takes off in a helicopter. Next, the Templars conduct a secret unveiling of the Apple of Eden. When Sophia finds out about her father's ill intentions, she refuses to be with him, and even tries to stop him from announcing their evil plans. However, Rickon does not listen to her, and unveils the Apple at the gathering. Unbeknownst to them, Callum and the assassins have already infiltrated the building, and are poised to strike. As Rickon unveils the glowing Apple to a cheering audience, Callum makes a bold move, and brutally kills him. He then disappears into the crowd with the apple. In the last scene, Sophia discovers her father's lifeless body and declares to take over his company. The movie ends with Callum standing on a rooftop, overlooking the city, holding the powerful Apple of Eden alongside two fellow assassins. However, the fate of the artifact and the future of the Creed still remains uncertain, and it will forever, because this movie did very poorly.